what's happening, family? It what is your, up? You good, Lou? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good. Good, good. What's happening, family? It is your man, CRB Jr., with Louis F. Stevens. That is one half plus one half, which makes the total of Big Boss Filmworks. We are at Motown Mafia Podcast, episode 57, Lou. 57. Moving along, we got to think of, well, we won't have to wait for 100. We'll have to figure out something new special for 75. Mm -hmm. And then when we get to episode um, 100. So, yeah, episode 55, uh, 57, I'm sorry, family. Episode 57 of 57. Motown Mafia Podcast. It has been a journey. Um, just was looking at some other stuff that Brother Lou has been working on. Um, so much going on, Lou. I feel like a CIA agent, but we cannot oh, we can't discuss all or, these or, or, or divulge. But uh, um, the industry is um, the industry is still buzzing. The, industry. the, the yeah. uh, Motown Mafia movement, uh, the Big Boss Filmworks as a company. Um, continues to grow. We are simply honored and humbled family by the continued support out there. Um, and with that said, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, uh, make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe button. If you're uh, looking at us on Facebook or on other platforms, make sure you're hitting that like and follow button. All that helps the algorithms to make the great gods in the sky of Silicon Valley make sure that we stay relevant. That's what's up. And then, and also, if you have any kind of questions or comments, we'll be looking in on you uh, during this live. All right. So awesome, awesome, awesome. So you good, though? Everything good with you? Man, everything's good. We we uh, working hard. Uh, the, the, we, we did get a chance to uh, view making of the Mafia. Saw a sneak preview of the preview. Yes, yes, yes. We can, it's going to premiere, um, you know, we don't want to rush things, so I know we have been a little delayed in its release, but we think it's going to... I'm pretty sure after seeing the preview of the preview, you guys are going to get a lot out of it. Um, we are populating our Patreon channel, so you, that's where it's going to premiere at. It'll be on our Patreon channel in 2023. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you guys... Uh, Check on it and tell a friend to tell a friend. That's right. Um, so let's get to it. Um, first and foremost, because we do take pride in the work we do here, we want to do a clarification and it ties actually into our story. Oh, yeah. We did a story on a brother named Duop and his comrade uh, R.I.P. L.A. And I believe in the course of that conversation, we said R.I.P or implied that Brother Duop had also transitioned along with his friend um, L.A., both Harlem street legends. So let, let us be clear. Uh, I've been told and thanks all the fans out there who commented on that. We are not too big to say that we made a mistake and we don't want to do that. Um, Duop is still alive. Um, he actually has a book that was done called Seeds of the Game. Um, his comrade L.A. did transition, but Duop is alive. We are pleased to hear that. Thank God. Um, he's obviously keeps a rather low profile, but that's here nor there. Um, so we just want to straighten that out. Duop is still alive. Um, he does have a book out called Seeds of the Game. Yeah. Actually, because I was so struck by the initial just research we did on him and his story, I'm going to get that book, Seeds of the Game. Maybe we'll do a review yeah, be on moment. that sometime in um, 2023. Mm -hmm. But speaking of Duop, L.A., R.I.P., um, and that whole era of New York and Harlem, was checking out some more content as we do and came across a fascinating character from that era who was actually a friend of Duop. A gentleman by the name of Craig O. Craig O. Saw the documentary. Man. Heavy duty story. Heavy duty story. Um, So the, it's a lot of stuff on Craig O. He's been in a few different things. He's got his own a couple different projects there on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um. I believe I saw him on a Frank Matthews. I want to say it's the Frank that he was one of the analysts also on the Frank Matthews doc that uh, Al Prophet did. Okay. Um, but he's been he's been chronicled by a few different people because he's one of the few guys still left and around from that era. Um, uh -huh. So yeah, you know he he goes 
so this guy, Craig O, long story short, um, very articulate brother, too, before we get into it. And it's always good to hear brother. Yeah, he's do. scholarly. Yeah. Seriously. Um, and, he, and he's been around the block. Um, and we, we always try to convey here, and, and obviously we're about the the struggle as, we, you know, depicting life as it really is in the struggle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, but there are, and I say this is all humility, there are only a very small few who have seen this thing called the hustle from the very top of the mountain mm -hmm. to the bottom of the valley. Right on. Um, this gentleman, Craig O, is one of those guys. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's not taking anything from anybody. Um, he was a kid in the era of the golden era of H in New York City, which was along with, I would say, I've always thought that New York, that Harlem and Detroit have so many similarities when it comes to the hustlers' style, fashion, and just scope and scale. During the during the days during of the, the gold council. during the golden era, yeah. right? So he was there and privy to um, the council, which so mm -hmm. we're talking about guys like uh, Leroy Nicky Barnes, Guy Fisher, mm -hmm. and their comrades. Right. Well. This brother, Steve uh, Craig O, was a child during this era or coming up teenager. Mm -hmm. And as fate would have it, um, so he got brought into being around these legendary OGs at a young age. Obviously, I can relate to that and how that impacts a young African-American male. Yeah. If all the men that you are seeing as your mentors and the peer group of your adult class happen to be the elite of the street. Of the street, right. Right, and how that kind of gives you a different outlook on life than maybe the average teenager yeah. might have. And, and Craig O definitely had a similar situation in that. Um, so the way, well, the way his journey into the underworld or into the highest echelons of the New York underworld was he... Um, Okay, let me get the story right. There's a guy named Steve Ash. Okay. Who's his man, like his older mentor, right? Right, right. This guy's sister is this beautiful young lady by the name of Shemeca. Shemeca, right. Shemeca catches the eye of a man by the name of Leroy Nicky Barnes. The untu Mr. Untouchable. Mr. Untouchable at this point. Uh, yes. We would know, of He's course. He's on top that of the world. Nicky, at this point. Nicky gonna get touched. Oof. The people gonna touch him, but at this point, Nicky Barnes is at the peak of his height. Um, the estimation they use in the documentary we saw was that the Barnes organization. It wasn't really because it, it wasn't all these guys didn't work for Nicky. They worked together. Guys like Guy Fisher and the rest of that crew, loosely called the Council. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to be careful with those names because the feds like just giving things names so they can get people RICO charges. Big time. Um, about a hundred million a month. Is the number that that they that they used, and given the scope and scale that those guys were operating on, and obviously seeing the scope and scale like that Eddie and at his height what he was doing, that's actually a believable number for the organization, mm -hmm. right? So, Craig O's man is Steve Nash, Steve Steve Ash rather, brother Steve Ash, R.I.P. We'll get yeah. to how he got to be R.I.P. Um, his sister is this beautiful sister by the name of Shemeca. Mm -hmm. who must have been following the timeline by the time she caught Nikki's eye, she would have been in maybe 18, 19, 20-ish. Okay. Right? But she's a show-stopping sister. Nikki, top of the world, running the town, right, right, right. She's a sister. Obviously, he is in more than a position to take care of her financially. He does it through a little more stylish way. He puts her brother, Steve Ash, on. So what the fact that so that way, if her brother is on, mm -hmm. her brother can take care of his sister. Mm -hmm. So, but still in all, um, Nikki and Shemeca form a relationship. Right. Craig O now is being mentored in school by Shemeca's brother Steve Ash, who is deeply immersed in the Barnes organization and the whole crew. Mm -hmm. Um. And the smallness of, as these clicks go, he's friends with the brother. Yes. Do I? 
Yes, yes. We just did a, 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 a podcast on doo Right. And again, I, I mean, what I found fascinating, like, again, I always try to give some nuances, insights on this kind of thing. The fact that he had been schooled at a young age around those OGs mm-hmm. really served him well. Yeah, definitely. And obviously it served doo well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Big time. Big time. Um, a couple other similarities. He grew up, Steve, um, Craig O, as you noticed, didn't grow up poor. Right, right. Definitely right? from the dock, yeah. From the dock. His dad, his dad, a guy by the name of Cadillac Jack, had been a prominent numbers runner in Harlem. Mm-hmm. Um, he lived at a building I actually know where it's at because uh, he comes from the Sugar Hill section of Harlem okay. up on the hill for those of you who have seen the famous Wesley Snipes movie Sugar, Sugar Hill, Hill mm-hmm. right um, a building where a lot of the black elite stayed at called 555 Edgecone Avenue mm-hmm. a doorman building um, so he grew up actually with some affluence yeah. yeah but the calling of the streets is the calling of the streets as we can relate to Yes. So, anyways, his man Steve Ash puts him on. Um, he starts running errands for him. He gets an opportunity to meet Nikki Barnes, Guy Fisher, the rest of the council, the guys who are really making it happen in in New York at that time, in Harlem in particular at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of a Camelot period. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, it. It. I mean, it. It looks like they had it sold. It. They really look like the commission, but the black version of the commission. If you ask me. I mean, um, all respect and shout out to T and Meech and the whole BMF family. There were black crime organizations, whether it was uh, Nikki Barnes' organization, the Guy Fisher's crew. Mm-hmm. They were referred to as a form of a black mafia, or the yeah. Harlem Black Mafia. The Harlem Black. The mafia. media again was calling the Eddie Jackson organization a black mafia in the seventies. Mm-hmm. And again, that's in no way an attempt to throw any shade on the magnificent run and what uh, Meach and T and that whole crew did. And mm-hmm. Shout out to them and the success they're having with their TV show. Yeah. And it, we're going to do a review on it. Anybody, again, on the side note, if you guys have not checked out um, BMF Blowing Money Fast, do. If you follow this kind of stuff, um, I saw the whole thing. It was great work. Shout out to uh, the BMF family. Yeah. Shout out to the good people at G-Unit. Um, now they did some excellent work again. Yeah. That photo there actually um, profiled in episode one of um, BMF, and then you got the big homie from the D, uh, KK. Mm-hmm. Shout out to homie KK. He um, did some great work. Yeah, in that episode blowing money fast. And yeah. blowing money fast episode two. Yeah. Um, but again, so back back to the story of uh, this this guy Craig O. So. Craig O is learning the ropes quick. It is still the golden era of H mm-hmm. in Harlem. And yes, the Nicky Barnes organization is at the top of the world, is at the top of the food chain there in Harlem. Of course, I think you guys have heard me speak. Uh, Pops and Nicky's path crossed a couple of times, and the fat man and Nicky had a, a pretty decent relationship with each other. So yeah. At that level, yeah, everybody, I mean, everybody crosses paths with everybody. Air gets thin. Air gets very thin at that, at that level. Um, so kind of like myself, I remember uh, he was a very high-paid errand boy. <laughs> yeah. There go, he's growing yeah. up. He's a very, very He's high. working his way up the ranks. You, you, people, uh, it, it's it's said, uh, it's a line in Hova, and it's the truth, you know. Often you got to run errands for the bosses before you become a boss. That's the only way it works. You, know. you work at McDonald's, you start on what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The uh, lowest fry, fry station. Fry station or the dishes. <laughs> Before you get to dishes, the cash. Yeah, right. exactly. Before you get there. Um, okay, so, yeah, moving along. Him him and this guy do up. So, according to this doc that, we were, that I was reviewing, um, he actually is the guy who kind of brought do into the world of mm-hmm. the Barnes organization, some of those legendary OGs. Mm-hmm. They gave him an opportunity to... Um, View firsthand how guys at a certain level really do their thing, mm-hmm. which um, so there were two things that, that struck out to me that uh, Duop and Craig O, well, had some vision mm-hmm. separated. One early on, they set some financial goals, okay. which was uh, Craig O tells a story about that he comes back, he sees his man Duop, he tells him that they were just someplace, and he counted a million dollars. Right. 
And this man's duo's response is, one day, we gonna have a meal. We gonna see that meal. We gonna see that M ticket ourselves. Yeah. And they went about making a plan to achieve that goal. Like the and goal. Brother Duop, after seeing the beautiful sister Shemekha, set another goal for himself. Yeah. Yeah. That he was one day going to uh, have her on his team. So these young brothers had some ambition. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it, right? They had no, some ambition. No question about it. Um, the story moves on. It again, it's the golden era. The Barnes organization is on top of the food chain. So his man, Steve Ash, and, and Craig Go has now got to meet everybody. He's gotten a name in the streets. Um, everybody in Harlem and the Sugar Hill area knows that um, he's with Steve Ash, who was mm-hmm. with Nikki. So he has afforded all the privileges yeah. of being in that position. Yeah. Um, his his friend Shemekha, who's date Nikki, is the queen of Harlem. And then tragedy strikes, right? Um, as as um, they often say in that doc, the Harlem Black Mafia. You got to understand that prior to Nikki's indictment, he was an absolute legend and revered in that community, yeah. or in the in in the in the streets of America. Period. That's right. It, to say his name rang bells is a major understatement. That's right. So, um, you guys have heard the story. We've chronicled it a few times, and it's been chronicled by much. In um, the late 70s, early 80s, uh, Nikki makes a fatal mistake. He decides to take a picture on the cover of the New Yorker magazine with the caption, Mr. Untouchable. Because Nikki had beat, like, a bunch of local cases. Yeah, they... They basically called him uh, the black John Gotti. Before John Gotti. Before John Gotti. That's well, what John yeah. Gotti is the Italian Nicky Barnes, actually. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, in the like, documentary. Right, he, right. Of course, he's going to, you know exactly. what I'm saying, draw that parallel. Exactly. Uh, but he definitely had a Teflon effect to him. Oh, yeah. But Nicky's, Nicky poses for this uh, cover story on the New Yorker magazine. It says, Mr. Untouchable. Mm-hmm. Um, Jimmy Carter, the president at the time, sees this, calls in the people from the Justice Department and says, this is a mockery. This guy is making a joke of all of this. Right. He becomes public enemy number one. The government puts all their resources in. He's indicted. Nikki goes away. Mm -hmm. Nikki is convicted and gave and given basically all day. Had to put that ninja suit on. That's coming. Uh, That's coming, right? mm -hmm. Right? So... This is where, you know, family, men, women, the streets, and I guess everybody is different, but Nikki goes away. The rest of his comrades are still out. And this young lady, Shemekha, who he is, has been on his team. Now, Nikki, a player, Nikki, a big fella. He got a bunch of women, but I guess he had his woman and then he had Shemekha, right? Yeah. Okay. Moving the story forward. Word get out that supposedly, and again, I wasn't there. This is a lot of street legend that spoke about in it. So this is not Detroit Motown Mafia podcast passing judgment on the brothers in Harlem's affairs, even though it was a long time ago. Yeah. Urban legend has it that Guy Fisher, perhaps, and maybe other members of, and again, I don't know any of this to be factual. This is so I'm qualifying urban legend, street legend. Urban it legend. is spoken in this documentary, um, and it's been spoke by a whole bunch of other people, including Lee, the guy rest his soul, Leroy Nicky Barnes. Mm-hmm. In theory, supposedly, um, Guy Fisher and other members of the of Nicky Barnes' innermost circles started having relationships with Shemekha and his other woman that got back to Nikki. Nikki felt some kind of way. He also didn't feel they were helping out on his legal bills and add insult to injury that they were supposedly sleeping with his woman. Well, where this ties into Craig O's situation is um, when Nikki decides to cooperate, Mm -hmm. he then turns, I mean, so... The motive, his motive, he says, for cooperating is these guys ain't doing right. They're messing with my broads. I'm going to tell them all. He gets Guy Fisher and numerous other members of his inner circle all indicted and convicted. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But so let, let's stop here. And I don't know. You give me your, your thought on it. All right. You've been whining and dining a 26 year old or 20 something, early 20 year old sister. You get locked up. You got to go sit down. The good white folks give you a basketball score for your sentence. Right. What do you expect her to do? Her to do? I expect her to meet somebody as soon as the, as soon as as she gets a chance to. At twenty six years old. She's not even twenty six yet. No, she's twenty four at this point. Uh, even younger because she she. she she, well, moved forward, she ends up getting killed at 26. Not a break. So right. Nikki did six years before he started talking. So you do the math. And, and, and Nikki is how old at this point? Ah, shit. Probably he's about got, what? He's got to be in his 40s. I was going to say about 40s. Early 40s, late 30s, at the early, probably early 40s. Oh, no. I mean, you know. You already know what I'm saying. I mean... They told me that the P-U-S-S-Y don't belong to you because slavery is over. First of all, every man need to know that. If she give it to you, that's what she, it's her, it's hers to give A to her. Now, there are, of course, rules to this shit. If the crew was dipping in the honey pot, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't they right. And it, who else she gonna mess with but other heavy hitters? Yeah, it would have been nice in theory to go get a heavy hitter in Philly, right? In Boston, come to Detroit, me, you know, while your man is sitting down. So it ain't. But people is people, and 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 I don't know. I mean, if 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 you gonna sit down for that long, you come to expect, you know, you gotta go ahead with your life. Keep in contact with me, you know, see how I'm doing or whatever, you know, but. To make sure my commissary is straight. Right. I mean, I'm not condoning the fact that his friends were sleeping with his broads. Right. Right. Because, I mean, that's just bad business, and that's why we were talking about earlier. If you right. Know, guys who've seen that movie Casino, and there's a situation with the Italian mob, and then the, the Jewish guy, they got running their gaming, and one of the Italian guys are, is banging uh, Sam Rothstein's wife. Right. And he's terrified that the bosses back in New York will find out right. that he's doing this because he knows the Italians don't play that yeah, game because right. it's just bad for business. I mean, and then you, you drew the same uh, parallel with Heat with with, uh, with Val Kilmer's wife. Same, the, the, same. The De Niro character has to tell her that, you know what, even though I know my man's been acting foolish, gangsters actually like family structure yeah because it helps business mm -hmm. when that nigga shit start everybody sleep with everybody's broads it's gonna be chaos mm -hmm. the what i did not know until watching this craig o doc was that the go backtrack his buddy doo-wop is now ascending so as the nikki barnes organization is in full free fall this brother doo-wop is ascending he's coming up shemekka's the queen of the street what do a young man who on his way to being the king of the streets want? A queen. He wants the queen. That's so right. there's a lot of shit going on up there in Harlem with 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 the drug elite and 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 this beautiful sister. Um, unfortunately, the thing is going to end tragically. Um, according to the documentary, Steve Ash is assassinated. Um, connected with Nikki starting to cooperate um, and Shemeka at 26 this beautiful young African American woman is gunned down in a bar up in Harlem twice today um, again I can't wrap my head around it I know I was taught a different ethic mm -hmm. when it comes to that mm -hmm. um, I've been around the block though people got different values of life Right. And and it's the thing that might offend me and send me off the edge ain't the same thing that offends somebody else and sends them off the edge. That's right. Um you know this click here. The real deal family in these in this world. Life in the streets is like life in high school. It's very incestuous. Everyone tends to know everybody. And a woman of that profile who's in that clique, given a 
10 year period of time she might engage in relations with three or four different guys at that at that is ain't no question i don't know why they tripped out about it i don't i mean i know there's a lot of other things people getting life sentences conspiracy cases people i it seemed to me looking back that i i, I want to believe that it couldn't simply have been some d-i-c-k p-u-s-s-y affairs that caused all this to well nikki use. also i mean and and semi-related you know being being this big uh this big kingpin he absolutely had no patience for addiction you know people with addiction and i'm saying that from family members who actually knew him you know they said he was like really he had his ways you know what i'm saying like you talking about nikki barnes nikki barnes absolutely nikki is an ex-joke fiend though you know that right from what I heard, he couldn't he couldn't stand nobody as a dope fiend. So maybe well, that probably because he right he was yeah <laughs> he already know he know better than most yeah exactly what, what 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 come what come with that right yeah ex- well and then G money if you will you know yeah um but a lot of guys Demetrius you know had very little didn't get high my pops didn't get high. a lot of guys um that know the game know that. Um, Vice can bring down organizations and bring down situations. That's right. But this guy, Craig O', saw and then he, all three phases of it. Mm-hmm. He saw the golden era of H. He saw when the powdered game, and which is often overlooked because people who crown all this stuff, there was a period between the end of the quote-unquote H. Kingpins and the creation of the, for to quote Kevin Childs, book Childs, the big homie Kevin Childs, the beginning of the crack era. Okay. Where people like Kevin, people like Rich Porter and a lot of those guys, and it was telling here in Detroit, there was a burgeoning, prosperous powder c- cocaine business. Yeah. And, but the world was so much different then because that was still when people who used powder cocaine were the elite. The elite. And could afford it. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have the, Nearly, of course, the terrible consequences on the community that crack would later. Yes. Well, later, but so he saw that. Then he saw the the introduction of crack into the era, um, in the Harlem, and so I just I suggest anybody who wants to really the check him out is easy if you search his name Craig O. Mm-hmm. A lot of great information will come up. Uh, the tie in with him and Duop and that whole Craig O. Duop. Oh, and before. I, that was cool. Those they do make their gold. Does Craig O and Duop get a safe? Yes, yes, yes. And they actually stack, 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 stack their money, mm-hmm. and which again shows that they have been around some. They have been around some real guys. Oh yeah. To be that happened. young, thinking like and that, the, the, to be that young and have the discipline to stack that meal ticket. The pride that they took in their appearance and just the refinement, you know, is not the same conversations. That you come to expect, you know. Well, unlike right, unlike only a young man who had been around some real heavy hitters growing up, they had nice things, but they did not. They were not necessarily overly flashy or ostentatious. Right. As he said, you might see it on our chest, you might see it on our wrist, but later they would get cars and things, but they would have nice jewelry and things, and not even necessarily be wearing them. Correct. Um, but that's because they had been schooled well. Mm-hmm. They had been mm-hmm. schooled well, and they had been. If you've been around money for a long time, after a certain while, it doesn't make you go crazy that you got to show everybody you got it. Hmm. A lot of what comes from if you go from never having no money to having a whole bunch of money, obviously there's a natural inclination to show the world I ain't broke no more. Right. But he had been around money and big money at the highest levels of the street for a long time. So mm-hmm. him and his man Duop uh, handled themselves a little bit different. Um, that was a tragedy at 26, what ended up happening with Shemekha. That was uh, Steve Ash was also killed, uh, caught up in that. Uh, Craig O' had to actually go on the run, he said, for a little bit because he's real close. That's his man, Steve mm-hmm. Ash, mm-hmm. and he's close with Shemekha. And, and his man, Duop, kind of, I guess, was involved with her, too. So he took a brief break away from New York. He mm-hmm. does come back and get get to get to getting. And... Um, but yeah, man, fascinating story, man. Craig that, was, o. that was a hot story, yeah. That's a hot story, right? Um, so you guys check that out. Give give me a shout out. You know, we don't hate. We congratulate. So when we come across um, some stories that we feel that 
guys who've been out here doing this thing, been mm-hmm. a part of uh, building this urban culture. And again, let us not get it twisted. The, if hip hop music is the culture tone setter for the world, then it's these guys, people from our world and from our orbit, because the rap hip hop is just the mimicking of that. That's what, that's it, right? So, that's it. So yeah, check them out, family. Craig O. Mm-hmm. Um, the Craig O story, you, you'll find it good. Uh, shout out to Vano, Vano's Apparel. You see Vano? Vano. I stopped by, didn't catch Vano. And uh, Blazing Hookahs. Blazing Hookahs. Uh, right there on Davison between Linwood and Dexter. It is Christmas time. Family, check him out. Go check yeah. out Vano's Apparel minute. on Dave, West Davison, Detroit, Michigan, between Linwood and Davison. Can't miss it. Great big sign up that says Vano's. Uh, he's got his Christmas gear in. Uh, ask for Vano, ask for Sister Kaylin, ask for Brother Bow Wow. They'll take care of you. You want to rent something for the holidays? Have a fair, great space right next door to him and blazing at the hookahs. blazing hookahs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just great, great people, great fashion, great styles. Mention Big Boss Filmworks. Mention, mention Big Lou. Mention me. Mention anything to do with the Motown Mafia, Big Boss family. They're gonna take care of you anyway, but they're gonna take extra spare care of you so that's vinyl's apparel that is on west davidson between linwood and dexter give them a shout 